Jürgen Klopp, my old friend and fellow German. I haven't met him in years, but he hasn't changed. <laughs> no. I can speak like a waterfall. If you speak three words English, an English person makes a sentence of it. <laughs> the top six in England would be top six in Germany, in Italy, in Spain, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I first interviewed him 12 years ago in Mainz. Then again in Dortmund, where he became a legend in Germany. And now we're chatting in Liverpool. When we first met in Mainz, <laughs> we were talking German. Now we're sitting here and talking English. What's the main difference from then to now? I, I am at least much older. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> the job changed completely, yeah. The job changed Did completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in in Mainz in the very beginning responsible for absolutely everything around the football team. Um, we had with Christian Heidelin sporting director and so that we were the club pretty much um, to decide all the things. It was the best way to learn the job. Eh? So if you have to do everything and nobody's really watching it because mine, nobody was interested in mine. You know, so I had to learn it the hard way and I learned it the hard way. And meanwhile, I'm boss of what I did that time alone. I have now, I would say, nearly 20 assistants for. So I'm now really the manager of, 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 a, of a big coaching staff. And, um, and I can do that because I know what they all are doing because I did it by myself, so that made me the... I, I knew it that, there, that time when I left, I cried obviously a lot on the stage there, and, but then I said, um, all I am uh, and all what I became, let you happen. And um, that's exactly li like it is. So I learned everything there and could use that for the rest of my life. Alles, was ich bin, alles, was ich kann, So are you still using the same tools you used back in Mainz, here? I still use uh, my interest of, for people. So I was always very interested in people. So that didn't change. The problems of the boys changed a lot because of social media and stuff like that, much more pressure. When more money is involved, the pressure increases incredibly. Eh? So, um, and that's all, they are very young, and but they, are, they are judged every day. It's like acting constantly in a glass house, constantly, mm. because everyone sees you, whatever you do, each mistake, each failure, each good thing, each bad thing. The world out there is, if you are good, you are outstanding. If you are not good, you are the worst in the world. So there's nothing, there's not, there's only black, white, there's no gray. The color gray is some, disappeared somehow. But in normal things of life, I'm completely calm. And, and, and now, meanwhile, I'm much more experienced than I was that time, but, um, yeah, I said, probably we spoke about that, I'm not sure, years ago, but because I was a very young father, I had to learn it pretty early to take care for younger people, and I learned that, and um, that's what I'm still doing. The boys are now younger than my sons are, so, and um, I still like it a lot, and um, so that's it. And um, in that job now, there are only players with world-class potential. Not all of them will be world class, but they have world class potential. And my job is to help them to become um, really world class. And that's that's the job to do. And that's not they they, they know already 80 percent about football, but the last 20 percent can be really decisive. And that's my job. In Dortmund, he did the same. He picked young players and built a family, a very successful one. I always ask myself. How did he choose his players? How do you do it? Um, do you do it by in instinct, more by instinct or more by brain? Or is there something in between? Like Bauchgefühl or yeah, the chest reason? Then, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, it depends. Oh, it's too important that I only can let's speak my my belly, um, that's too important, eh? the things, it's too expensive, let me say, it's too expensive, uh, the people trust me a lot and um, and so I cannot spend millions by thinking, Whoop, could work. If you sign a player, you have to know as much as possible, it's easy to find a good football player, to know him as a person, um, or learning about him as a person is not that easy, that needs obviously experience and, and, and I, I try that. So players are very often surprised when I meet them first time that we don't talk at all about football. 
uh, because that, that thing is already done for me because he, we only sit here because he's a very good footballer. Otherwise, it would be a waste of time. I should have met a, <laughs> a not good footballer, to be honest, uh, and, and, and ask him about our club or whatever. So, um, yeah. So, what are you talking with him then? Life. Life. Life in general. Yeah. Uh, God and the good world. <laughs> God. God as well. <laughs> possible. Yeah. That's possible. Yeah, but not not really likely, to be honest. Um, everybody knows, probably. Meanwhile, I'm, that I'm, I'm really that I'm Christian, and um, but it's I'm not. Uh, I don't know. A bekira. No, I'm not yeah. that. So it, I don't, I'm not a missionary or whatever. That's that, that's how it is. So people are, we live in a free world, and um, we cannot. I. It's not my mission. Jurgen Klopp is perfect for Liverpool. Oh, well, Jurgen Klopp's a great fella. Doing a good job, yeah. Klopp, oh, what a very good trainer. He's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. He's even been nominated to be a German football ambassador for improving Germany's image abroad. But were people surprised when they met you and, and learned that you're German? <laughs> I think you hear, you hear immediately that I'm from Germany. We, we never get rid of our German accent. It's that they, they tell us that we have that German is a real hard language, and for us it's like English, speaking English, like English. It's so soft, and I, I never will, will be able to, to speak like that. So that's um, just not possible. Um, so they were not surprised that I'm German because they hear it immediately. But of course, um, it's you you realize that um, it's actually a time where, where where people when they think about Germany, they have a lot of good experiences. They met some Germans here, and in, they met them in England, they met in America and France, wherever they met them, it's all good people. So it's a, it's a good time, um, actually, for Europe. It doesn't look like with all the Brexit things around, but it's actually um, the time we had in the European Union helped, obviously, that we all came closer to each other. And that we, so I'm not sure how many foreign people live in London, to be honest. It's pretty much like Berlin. If you speak English, then you're in Berlin. It's the better language to speak in Berlin than German. So and I love that, to be honest. And in, in London, OK, it's English, of course, as well. But it's, it's the same from all over the world. They come together. And that's what, what I really love. I, I, I don't like this barrier thinking. And, um, that was what I loved most about the EU, that we could travel wherever we wanted and, yeah, needed a passport, but actually didn't have to show it. I know that it's not um, always that easy, 100%, but um, I still love the idea. When players go abroad, what, what would be your advice? Oh, be open. Just be open and be, 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 learn the language as quick as possible. That helps a lot. So, um, and the nice thing with English people is that uh, the, they know it. They, they don't speak pretty much any foreign language because they don't have to. The whole world is speaking English, so why you should learn a foreign language? For us, um, we are always a bit in English, but they are not a lot in German. But what they are re what's really nice is if you speak three words English, an English person makes a sentence of it. So they want to understand you. It's really like. Ah, oh, yeah, I know what you mean. And then they help you. So, but still, it helps a lot if you, if you learn the language. It always um, helps with socializing and, and, and coming together. So it's, it's, it's brilliant. But apart from that, just be open um, and, and really learn. And learn is maybe, for young people especially, sounds like a, a negative word because it means like reading a book or whatever. But it's, it's, it's learning. It's actually learning from, from life, um, how they are, why they are like this. So it's, for me, it's, it's really true. Uh, since I'm in England, a year and a half ago, I stopped drinking coffee. Yeah, and I mean, if you would have asked me um, two years ago, you want a tea? I said, I'm not ill. Sorry, I don't need it. <laughs> so, and it's just, it's a, but it's a nice tradition. It's a different ceremony to, to make it, and it's all, it's all a little bit different. The coffee is a machine, and I, I, I still can understand why people drink coffee. I had no coffee since one and a half years, so for different reasons. But that's only one little thing. So I understand it why, why, why people are doing it here. They have tea time. They call. Um, um, dinner, they call it for tea. So it makes no sense, but it's just, um, what did you have for tea? And you said, for tea, nothing, we don't tea, but it's dinner, so they call it tea. And it's all so little things that you only understand really when you live there because you don't find it in any books. So you're quite good integrated with the tea. 100%. <laughs> the tea yes, yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so it's, it's like this a full English breakfast. You could have offered me in Germany three times a week, and I would have said five times, I don't want it. So I don't want that. And, and you are now here, and it, you, you get it. In Germany, we think um, w one egg a day, or you die of a heart attack. If you die of a heart attack after one egg a day, then all England <laughs> collapse tomorrow, because they have five eggs in the morning already. I'm a, I think I'm a special one. 
That's how Jose Mourinho introduced himself at Chelsea, unlike Klopp. I don't want to describe myself. The only thing I, I can say, maybe I ask, does anybody in this room think um, that I can do wonder? No, so let me work. I'm a totally normal guy. I came from Black Forest. Um, um, my mother maybe sit in front of the of the television and, and watch this press conference and understand no word until now. So, and that is very proud. She's very proud. So I'm a totally normal guy. Um, I'm the normal one, maybe if you want this. When you came here, you introduced yourself as the normal one, and we were sitting in Germany and laughing because we knew you aren't, or are you? <laughs> I am 100 percent. But if you are normal, what are all the others? What are we? I don't know. I don't know. That's, uh, what do we uh, look? First of all, and I know that's how it is. Life is very often this kind of marketing. You have to be your own marketing business. Like you have to sell yourself stuff like that. That means you have to prepare for things like a press conference or whatever. I wasn't. So I'm the only. The, the only thing I know about myself is really that I can react pretty spontaneous, so because my life is my preparation for what may feel. As long as I talk about football, I'm always prepared, because I think so much about it, it's um, strange. Um, and at press conference, my only worry was that, I, that, um, that my English will be good enough, so. Because of course I had no real English skills, apart from I'm not the generation grown up with, okay, we have, could have heard a lot of music and learning English by that, like oh, my sons did, actually. Um, but I was not that music guy, so my English was kind of, and at a press conference, and we all know famous press conference with Lola Mateus and stuff like that, <laughs> first time in New York, and you don't want to be famous for that. No problems with the language. My English is not very good. My German is better. And I hope in the next months I can learn English for understand all questions. And I hope we have a little bit lucky and can win next year the American Soccer Championship. Then I said what I said. I was not, I was not prepared. I said I'm the normal one. And that's how I see myself. That's not, um, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, but it's not that I, that I want people to think, ah, he thinks, he says he's the normal one, but he knows he's the special one or whatever. That's not like this. I'm completely, because I think about myself as a completely normal person. I have so many questions still much more than answers, means how can, could I be special, how could I be exceptional. So I'm, uh, I'm a, know a bit more, a little bit more about football than, yeah, some other people, that's true. That doesn't make me a special person, that only gives only luck, because um, 500 years ago with that I couldn't have, I would have slept in the street, so with that knowledge. Um, and I'm a really lucky person that, that my best skill is needed somehow out there, and that's what I, appreciate every single day. I know hockey coaches, they work, I work a lot, they work five times more than I do and earn 4% of what I earn. So if I'm not a happy person, I'm, it would be really crazy. But I'm smart enough not to overestimate that, not to think, oh, oh that's like that, because it's, it's strange, it's just football. So I'm, for my, for how I see me, I'm, a completely normal person. And that's what I wanted to say that day, and now it's on a teacup. <laughs> but did you notice at any time that you're maybe a little more normal or less normal than the others? Because you are different from the others, aren't you? What, what am I? You are different from others. <laughs> now, I have another skill, and that's, an, again, pure luck. Um, I, I can, I can uh, how we say, <laughs> so I can speak like a waterfall. <laughs> so, and don't, I'm not worrying about what people think. That's true. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's true. That's true. So I'm not, yeah, absolutely. It's a pure gift. I know that. So it's a red light and camera. I'm not getting nervous. <laughs> 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 so that keeps me completely calm in a situation where 90% out there get nervous. That makes me different. It's a pure coincidence and a pure skill. I have nothing, I didn't teach myself in that, I didn't try to get it hard, it, it will be like this. Completely not. It's a pure talent. So how could I be proud on a talent? Yeah. So, but in the world out there where the, the, the outside view on you is really important, it's an important skill. Obviously, it it's an important skill, <clears throat> but again, pure coincidence. 500 years ago, I would have, I could have danced in front of the king, probably. <laughs> yeah, that's it, and all the rest, uh, and then I had again sleep again in the street. So I know so that. So you're a lucky guy. 100%. I, 
said it a couple of times, but it's really like that. The, the, the directors or the, the head of my school when I, when I, when I did the A-level, and I won a sports prize. Yeah? So my best friends won the science prize and the and language prize, and I got a sports prize, funny. So, and then he said in front of all these other guys who got A-level at night, with a mic in his hand, I hope it works out with football, <laughs> because if not, not, I'm really worrying about you. <laughs> So, God help you. And I, and, I, and I thought, okay, I think the same, but why do you have to say that now in this, that everybody can hear it? So I, w I knew I was lucky. People miss him in Germany. But what happened to German football since you went away? <laughs> That's the explanation now. What happened since I went away? That's good. I like that. So, sorry. <laughs> no, it's, not, it's of course... Um, Nothing really. So you went to the right yeah. place. You could put it like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, smart decision. Eh? No, um, nothing really. It's just after a long, long spell of um, fantastic results, big success, um, there's a little dip in the development that can happen. But I saw now a German team playing against Holland after um, Jung Löw made a few hard decisions, to be honest. But um, and it was full of skills, full of talent, full of youth, full of joy and all that stuff. It was a really, really good team. And um, um, I thought, whoop, if, that's a, if these are our problems, then there are no problems, really. Um, so after it's always, it should be in life like this. Why should always the same country win everything? Why should always the same team win everything? So there are moments when you have a high and moments when you have rather low. If you learn of it, then everything is fine and uh, there's no real problem in Germany. And with the international football like European League, German League. This discussion we have already for a couple of years in Germany, always when the teams are not that successful and it's the same. Um, we have to admit just in England is more money around. That's the truth because of TV money. So it's a different system, it's an owner system, it's not like it's not a club organization like we have it in Germany. And that um, makes life easier then. We have just the top six in England would be Top six, yes, together with Dortmund and Bayern in Germany as well, would be in Italy, in Spain, and blah, blah, blah. With all that, would be in that because they are just so good, just really good football teams. You're here now. Um, there's not much you, where you can go. You could be like the king of Germany and coach someday the national team, or you could go to Real or clubs like that. Do you have ever pictured yourself in the future? No. You don't do that? No, not at all. Nothing. It's not interesting. I'm, 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 be, um, if I think about my future, then it's the future when I stop working. Oh. Yeah, when, I, when, when it's that. Because that should be a moment when I still have uh, enough energy to do things I had never time for. So it should not be that I, I um, that I sit. It will not be. It will not happen that I sit on a bench when I'm 70 or something like that. It and will what be are much you going earlier. To do if you stop working? Oh, <laughs> then uh, a lot of things. I, I mean, look. The first part of my life was, I had only had a really good life, but the first part of my life was I had um, no money and no time, and then I had a bit more money, immediately no time anymore, and now I have the money, but absolutely no time. <laughs> so it means I didn't see uh, anything of the world. If I see a city, then I see the stadium and the hotel and the, the street we, when we drive with the bus. That's it. So, so time is the most precious yeah, thing. I'm one, I mean, well, a pretty... I have a pretty famous right word, I know face. So I cannot go to a lot of places without signing thousands of autographs, which makes it's no pro real problem for me because I, I'm most of the time tired if I'm not working. So, um, but it's like, so I hope for the day when I'm long enough out of the business, people don't recognize me in the streets anymore, and then I go and see the world. That's the plan, actually, and together with Ulla. And um, so, and if the boys and grandchildren want to join us, they can come. No problem. But that's it. That's a good plan. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Welcome. <laughs>